Hey man, you lost? Yes, I'm. I'm going to bag you. Bag you. Okay, you're in DICC. You're in Manila. Bag you. I realize that now. Um, I wanted to go to Burnham Park and. Burnham Park. Yeah, that's right. I like Burnham Park too. But so you're going to Burnham Park, yes. Park. boating? Yes. Yeah, I like, I like, I like that with my family. Where, where did you come from? Oh uh, well, I, I I came from Mindsview. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that that's really really interesting because Mindsview is in Baguio. Yes. Um, well, and from Mindsview, I hope. Burnham. From Mindsview, you were going to Burnham Park. That's six kilometers away. You are now 246 kilometers away. What happened? Well, I was in a hurry, so I, I bike really, really, really fast. You didn't even stop to ask for directions. No, I just bike as fast as I could. My dear friends, as insane as the situation is, this person is the perfect example of many, many people I meet. People ask for prayer, people ask for counsel, people who are lost, people who want to go somewhere, but they're, they're, they're confused, they don't know where to go, and all of a sudden, and I'll tell you why, and I'm gonna say this to you now, if you wanna go to where you wanna go, you gotta stop, look. And listen. I want you to tell somebody beside you, stop, look, and listen. There are some of you right now who are lost. There are some of you now who are confused. There are some of you now who you don't know where to go. You are directionless. And I'm telling you now, you've got to stop, look, and listen. First of all, you've got to stop. I want you to tell somebody beside you, stop. You've got to stop. You've, you've got to make that decision to stop. It is very, very important that as you're moving and trying to find where you want to go, I'll tell you why. Uh, can I tell you a story? I'll tell you a story. Can you have my water, please? Thank you so much. There were two guys, Mr. Rush and Mr. Wright. Say Mr. Rush. Say Mr. Wright. And they were given the task of cutting down as many trees as possible in 10 days. And by the way, we're environmentalists here, so I don't like this story, we don't like this story. But anyway, uh, let's just pretend that this, all the trees are sick and they need to be cut down so that we could replant new trees, okay? So, Mr. Wright and Mr. Rush were asked to cut down as many trees as they could in 10 days. And Mr. Rush, what he did was, was he just swung and swung and swung this, this, this axe from morning to evening. He did not stop. Everybody say, he did not stop. He did not stop. And this is what happened. Ask me, what happened? what happened? On the first day, he was, he was very happy. He was able to cut down 10 trees. Say 10. And then on the second day, he was not very happy anymore because exerting the same amount of effort, he was only able to cut down five trees. Say five. And then on the third day, exerting the same amount of effort, everybody say the same amount of effort. He was only able to cut two trees. Say two. And then on the fourth day, until the tenth day, Every single day, he was only able to cut down one tree. Everybody say one. Okay, let's count. Ten on the first day, five on the second day, two on the third day, and then one per day from the fourth day to the tenth day. Do you know how many that is? Twenty-four. You, you know why I know? Ask me why. Because I calculated it in my calculator. Math is my favorite subject, I want you to know that.
it is my favorite. I, it, it's so my favorite that I, I had to repeat. <laughs> it's a, my favorite subject. 24 trees, say 24 trees. Mr. Rush. Mr. Rush cutting the tree, swinging the axe again and again and again from morning to evening. He was so perplexed. Why? The production of his work kept going down, going down, going down. Everybody say Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright. He was someone who did not do what Mr. Rush did. He stopped. He stopped. In fact, he stopped twice a day. And do you know how much trees he cut down every single day? Do you know how many trees did he cut for 10 days? Ask me how many? 80 trees. Mr. Rush, how many? 24. How many, Mr. Wright? Even if he stopped twice a day. Ask me why. What, what, what's the difference? What, what, what happened? Why is it that Mr. Rush, 24 trees, Mr. Wright, 80 trees? Can anybody guess? I'll tell you why. Can I, can I tell you? This is what Mr. Wright did. The first thing he did in the morning, no, the first thing he did in, in his day, he did not swing his axe. What he did was he stopped. And, and what he did was he stopped. And he started sharpening his axe. Everybody say sharpen. He sharpened his axe first thing in the morning. And then when it was sharp, he swung his axe and he cut down four trees only. And then he stopped again. And then he did this again, sharpening the axe, sharpening the axe. And then he swung his axe and cut four more trees and then ended the day. And every single day he was able to cut eight trees. Every single day, eight trees. Why? Because he stopped to sharpen his axe. I want you to punch him on the shoulder and just say, sharpen your axe. The only way for you to sharpen your axe is for you to stop. And there are people who are not stopping. There are people who are working and working and working and working. And you know what happens? They're, they, they, they're, they're just not being able to reflect. Their bodies are not able to res get restored. You know, there are people who, who can't even read a book. They can't even attend a seminar. They can't even talk to a mentor because they're so busy doing and doing and doing, not understanding your production is going down and down and down. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You've got to be. And that's why, that's what the scripture was saying. That's what the Bible was saying. The, the, the just what we're, it is vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. You've got to learn to stop. One more time, tell somebody beside you, stop. And then you've got to look. Everybody say, look. The guy going to Baguio reminds you to burn him. The reason why he, he could not understand that he was not reaching his goal was, was because he was rushing and hurrying. Can, can you tell somebody beside you, tingin tingin pag time. <laughs> Look at where you're going. In fact, the question I want you to always ask yourself is, am I going nearer or farther my destination? Everybody ask that question together. Am I going nearer or farther my destination? What do you want in life? What do you want in life? <laughs> Hold someone's hand, please. Hold it hard. Crush on bones. Come on. Ask that person. What do you want in life? What do you want in life? What, what do you really, really want in life? Are you going nearer to your destination? Or are you going farther? <laughs> Let me tell you a story. I was, I was in America. Um, and I was talking to a guy who had three jobs. Now, now that kind of like, you know, still shocks me. Like, like sure, I've heard some people ha have that experience, but, you know, why, man? You know, and, and he was telling me he has a full-time job, 40 hours. 
He's, he's got two part-time jobs, so that's 20 and 20. 80 hours, working 80 hours. And then I ask him this question, why are you doing this? And he gives me this answer, for my family. I'm working for my family. That's such a noble purpose, such a beautiful destination. But as I kept on asking him questions and finding out his situation, here's what I find out. Ask me what? I found out this. He was working for his family. He was doing this for his family. But in the process of working for his family, he was losing his family. His marriage was dead. His kids don't know him. Some of them hate him. His family was a mess. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It was clear he was going to Burnham Park, but he was going all sorts of different directions. There are people who are like that. I'm, I'm doing this for my family, but in the process, I'm losing my family. It's, it's ironical, it's paradoxical, but that's the situation. You know, They're losing their health. They're losing their relationship with God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now I'm going to ask you this question. Do you know of people like that? The vision is clear. They know where they want to go, but in the process, everybody say process. They, first, they lose their purpose. They, they fall in love with the process. They forget their purpose. Do you know of people like that? Raise your hand if you know of people like that. Raise your hand if you know people like that. They, 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 know, they know their purpose but they forget about it because of the process. And I'm going to ask you this question, and don't raise your hand. Are you going through that right now? It was clear what you wanted to do, but in the process, you forgot your purpose, and you lost your way. Are you that person I'm speaking to right now? Are you going through that situation when you're going to Burnham and you know it very clear? In fact, you were already in Bagyo. You were already there. But in the process, you lost your way. I'm telling you now, stop. Just stop. Look at where you're going. And now I want you to listen. Say listen. The only way for you, you know, we live in a noisy world, yes or no? We live in a noisy world and your heart is noisy. I'm speaking God's word to you now. You need space and time. Everybody say space, space. and time for you to hear the voice of God in your heart. You've got to listen to what God is telling you. You've got to listen. Can, can I invite you to stand up, please? We're, we're going. I'm going to invite you to, to do a very simple ritual of trust. Remember last week, I taught you two rituals of trust. Well, this one, is, it, it's so simple, you know, it's like... One of, one of the things I do is when I've got a, when I've got a big problem or a small problem, I, I, just, I just raise my hands and I say, Lord, I trust you. It's just so simple. Just lift up my hands and say, Lord, I trust you. And big problem, small problem. It doesn't matter. Ask me why. Trust. Trust that there's no problem too big for God's power and too small for God's concern. You understand that? How many of you have a big problem? Raise your hand. Uh, just, just, just be honest, you have, you have a big problem. There is no problem. That problem that you have right now, God's power is bigger than that problem. Amen? Trust Him. Trust Him. And how many of you have small problems? Raise your hand. Just everybody. Yeah, we've got small problems. Wonderful. I, I, I see some spouses looking at their spouses. Small problem. I, I can handle this, you know. You know, there's, there's, this, there's this thing. How heavy is this? How heavy? Not very heavy. 8 ounces, 12 ounces, I don't know, 10 ounces. Right? 
It's, it's, it's light. Now you hold this for one hour. Can you handle? Can you handle this hour? One hour. You can, right? It's easy. You hold this for a day. Are you okay? You know, I don't care how light this is. If you hold this for 12 hours, something will ache here. Am I right? Yes. It's gonna ache, no matter how light. How about if I hold this for a week? What will happen to my arm? I won't be able to move it no more. It'll be frozen. It will be racked with pain. That's what happens to people who worry. When you worry, no matter how small your worry is, if you don't stop thinking about it, it's going to churn and churn and churn in your mind. You know what's going to happen? You're going to have all sorts of pain. You're going to have all sorts of stress. Your body will cave in. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. I don't care how big your problem or how small your problem, you've got to say, Lord, I trust you. And leave. Just, just put it down. You've got to put it down. Tell somebody beside you, put it down. The big worry, the big problem, the small problem, you've got to what? You've got to put it down. You can't carry a big problem or a small problem on your own. You've got to put it down. You've got to put it down. Are you with me on this? You've got to go home. I'm going to preach about that this coming Sunday or last Sunday for the year. You've got to go home to God and say, Lord, I trust you. Amen. Amen. And, and I want to end this with this very, very simple story. There was this monk, and, and he was with his apprentice, and they were in the forest, and it was a hot day, and, and, the, and, the, and the monk said ah, to his apprentice, I'm thirsty, can you, can you, get, can you get water from the lake? And there was, there was this, this lovely lake there. And so the apprentice got his bottle, and, and, and went to the lake and he was about to dip the bottle on the lake when you know what happened ask me what happened Carabaos came you know ten of them big and small ones you know and, and they, they, they walk, went in the lake and then he said uh oh <laughs> and there was all the, the, the lake became very muddy and so he runs back to the monk no, the, the, his, his, his uh, superior, and he said, Master, Father, I'm sorry that the lake, you know, been very, very muddy, Carabaos came. And, and so the, the monk did, did not say a word. And then 30 minutes later, say 30 minutes, the monk says to this apprentice again, student, can you get water from the lake? And, and, and the apprentice wanted to say, but it's dirty, but you know, out of obedience, he goes, and when he goes to the lake, what does he find? It's now clear. And he gets water, and he brings it to the monk. And then the monk smiles as he was drinking the water, and he says, what did you do? And the apprentice said, nothing. You just let it be. You just let it be. When your mind is muddy and confused and chaotic. Let it be. Stop. Stop. Put it down. Put it down. Whatever big or small problem, put it down. Trust in God. Let it be. And then your mind will be clear. And then you will hear the voice of God. You, you got what I'm saying? And maybe right now you're confused with your problem. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what to do with your problem. You don't know what to do with your concern. Put it down in the hands of God and let God speak to you. Do I hear a loud amen? Yeah. We're, we're, uh, can you just raise your hand for a while? Just raise your hand. And just do this ritual of trust. You're, 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 you're holding your problem in your hand. And I want you to imagine God taking that problem from you. Just, and then as he gets the problem, say, Lord, I trust you. And then, and then give that problem to him. Let, let God take it from your hands. Let God take that problem from your hands. Say it again, Lord, I trust you. And then let your mind be clear. Let go. Let God. Let God be the one. Just... 
Put it down, put it down, put it down. Let your mind be clear. In Jesus' name.